Hey guys, Big Dan Bates here again with a special video this time. Uh, this was a request made during my complete menu walkthrough uh, about how to use your smartphone to control the AE6 or the A9000. Um, in the previous renditions of modern Sony cameras, the A6500, I believe the A7R2 as well, you had the options of downloading um, Sony Play Memory apps. One of the apps which was preloaded and built into the camera was Smart Remote, and it was a great app. You linked your phone to your tablet or smartphone, I mean, I'm sorry, you link, linked your camera to your tablet or smartphone and were able to remotely control it, uh, including changing your f-stop, your ISO, your shutter speed. You could snap the pictures or start the video from your phone. And you could zoom in and zoom out. The Play Memories apps have been removed from the A9. They do not have them. Uh, so what they did instead, they left the remote under the network menu page one, second from the bottom here we have control at smartphone. The one thing I'll say before we get started is I'm a little disappointed and I am sending Sony uh, support a, a letter, um, an email basically stating that whether it was intentional or not, there is no longer the ability to zoom in and zoom out with this smart remote. Um, I don't know if that's camera based or if it's software based. I do know that when they released the A9 that they updated the Sony Play Memories mobile app. And when I hook up to my 6500, I still have the zoom option. So I have to believe it's, it's camera based. So uh, I am gonna send an email, not that anybody listens to what some small person like me has to say, but it's feedback. Maybe if enough people write in, they'll fix that. Because part of the remote is the ability, the nice part about it is the ability to zoom in and out uh, as necessary for what you're remote shooting. So we're going to get started. First thing first, you must go to your the Google Play Store or um, if you have an iPhone like 98% of Americans do, then you're going to go to the, um, the App Store. Look, search for Sony Play Memories Mobile, download the app. Uh, I'll bring it up here. Now as far as the iPhone portion or smartphone portion of this video, there's gonna be screenshots overlaid over the menu. Uh, I usually use Reflector 2. Anytime I'm doing work on a mobile device to capture it, the problem is you have to be hooked up to the Wi-Fi for that. And to do this, what we're about to do, control a smartphone, you have to hook up to through Wi-Fi to the camera. So you leave your wireless network so reflector doesn't work. So I've been working, this is about the fourth take I've done on this, trying to figure out a successful way that's not gonna get anybody motion sickness for me moving back and forth between units to do this. And I've concluded it's going to be through um, screen captures of the iPhone. So control with smartphone, let's get started. So we're going to go on in here. We're going to turn this on, okay. Then we gotta go to connection info. This is going to launch the Wi-Fi standby tab. This screen is gonna come up. I am going to urge you to not do this. This installs a profile on your phone and for whatever reason, every so many uses, you gotta do this again and again and again. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because add-on profiles aren't considered secure uh, and every so often it forces you to redo it. Instead, and it's much more reliable and pending any major changes, you should never have to redo this. Hit the trash can button, lower right of back of the A9, and it brings you to this screen. Now, we're going to launch on our device. We're going to launch, go to your the settings, find your Wi-Fi. Let me screen capture that. So that's gonna be the bottom of these two. So when I hit this, it's gonna then prompt me for a password. You're gonna enter the password in exactly how you see it on your camera. 
Okay, so now I'm going to hit join. And again, don't use that password for yours because it won't work. It's every, every time it generates the connection, it generates a unique password. If I tell my, camera, my phone to forget this device, the next time I come in, it's going to be a different password. If I reset the network settings in the A9, it's going to be a different password. Okay, so now we are seeing, we close this now. Now we go back to Play Memories app. And this is what we have. So we're seeing uh, the camera view, which the camera is not really looking at anything impressive right now. And we have um, the top right. There is a, a little button with the arrows in the square. You can rotate the, um, your display of what the camera is looking at. If you, if you want to, for some reason, your device doesn't automatically rotate with the camera. You can rotate that. Below that, we see AWB. That's displaying your auto white balance. That it's set to auto white balance. And then we see the little satellite thing because I actually have my GPS connectivity working. We're going to go over that uh, actually as a bonus at the end of this video. So if I turn my phone, um, if I turn my phone landscape style. Now you see all those kind of things have gone away, so I'd have to hit display to bring them back up. So if I, now the mode, so we have again at the top, we have here our rotate screen, which is really nothing I've ever had to use. We have grayed out is mode, we're in manual mode. That's a mechanical setting on the camera that has to be changed. You would set that before you set the camera up and walked away from it. Next we have our um, shutter speed. So if I click on that, up comes a slider and I'm able just to slide that left or right to adjust my shutter speed. And the screen displays the effect of that because Sony has live view. Underneath shutter speed we have f-stop. Same thing, we have a slider. And with that slider, we can turn it up or turn it down. Okay, then we have ISO, same thing. You can jack it way up or set it back to a reasonable position. Uh, the center button on the left gray bar, or, uh, I'm sorry, the right grayed out bar uh, that center circle, that's what you're going to use to snap a picture. So if I click that, it's going to take a picture. Now it will have um, imported for preview a smaller sized uh, image of that onto your smart device. Now you can set your smart device to bring in a full size JPEG version of what you just shot, but typically you're not going to be working with that on your smartphone, so I have it set to. Uh, bring in a two mega, megabyte version. Uh, and then up top in that gray right bar, we have display, which brings you just a couple different display tech, you know, types here. Uh, down here, this green box with the, with the, um, with the uh, arrow in it, this brings up the pictures that you've taken. So it, it's playback. So that cycles your display through the different display modes. get all those captions and then the bottom is a menu and in menu you have white balance uh, which you can bring up and, and change and set uh, camera information ILC E9 review image for two seconds save options to on location information is on we're going to get into that in a minute and then your grid lines and mirror modes mirror mode will flip it so um, like right now, if you're looking at this picture, these are some decks, uh, card decks that we have, and you can actually read what it says. Sometimes for bloggers and all, uh, some cameras will actually do a mirror image, like certain webcams or things will actually flip you the other way where your words are backwards, so you have to enter mirror mode to fix that. That's not the case with these cameras. 
Okay, and then we have... Um, uh, actually, that, that's really about it. Now, if I go back into portrait mode, I have the auto white balance setting. I set it in the menu. Appears here next to the mode. You get the AW... AWB enabling you to pick what white balance you want. Now this work will work for pictures as well as video. If I can switch this to video without disturbing too much of what's going on here and losing my HDMI. So now we're in video mode. So now we're in video mode, and it tells you what mode you're in, program, and you can switch that to aperture priority, shutter priority, or manual. Same thing, you have your rotate the screen, which I just did because it was straight up and down for some reason, so I just rotated it to match what I'm seeing in my camera. Uh, now here... You have f5.6, one six of a second. Again, that's something that's set up in camera now. You don't get the option to do that in video with the remote uh, because I'm in program mode, so that's kind of a set thing. Uh, ISO, same thing. You can change your ISO. And here you have exposure compensation to darken it or brighten it depending on your needs. And from there, everything else is the same. You can cycle through your display. You can preview your live uh, or, or your recent videos and, and photos with the green box with the triangle on it. And menu, now the menu here is a little different. Here you have your recording mode. So you have movie format, which you can pick from your 4K, uh, your HD, standard MP4. Then you have recording modes within each one. You'll have the option of the 30p, 60p, uh, 24p, and then 30, 60, or 100 uh, megabytes or megabits, whatever it is, per minute or second or whatever. Um, grid line mirror mode, all that's the same. So in a nutshell, that's the short and long and, and the, the quickness of just getting into it. It doesn't really need much more, um, I guess, explaining than that, if I can put it that way. But that, that's what we're looking at. Now, to go into and set up GPS locations. I want to put my camera back in the manual here. We're going to go back into the menu. We're going to go and control with smartphone, and we are going to turn that off. Okay. Now, next page, location info link set. Okay, it's telling us, well, your Bluetooth's off, so we got to go to Bluetooth first. We got to turn on Bluetooth, then we have to go to pairing. Now, I'm going to launch into my settings we're going to go into bluetooth and turn bluetooth on so we've turned on bluetooth on the camera now we have to go into the play memories app and now that we've linked the camera up with wi-fi to take a picture if it wasn't there before you now have location information linkage okay so in here you're going to see now not paired camera ilc9 we're going to click that and it's pairing. This is asking us uh, on the camera, do we want to connect to the iPhone? We're going to hit OK. Now on the iPhone, it's going to ask us, and we're going to hit pair. Set uh, location info link and the menu to your camera in the on position. So we hit OK here. Uh, hit menu to go back, and now we're going down into info location. We're going to turn this on. 
The other things turn on by default that lets it set its time zone and everything else depending on your geographic location. Now we're going to go back to menu. Now if we look on play memories, we go back to the main page. It says location information linkage connected with camera. Now when I take this picture here, if you see up right under where it says RAW on the very top center of the screen, it says RAW XAVCS 4K. Underneath it, that's the little kind of rectangle with the drop in it, like the, the pin in it. That lets you know that it's, it's obtaining GPS information, so that's active. And if I were to take a picture and then go into the play at the bottom corner down here, you're going to see there's your GPS location. So if you have Bluetooth enabled and you come in here and you do your... Um, you do your, uh, you have your iPhone, I'm sorry, you have your iPhone on, you have Sony Play Memories app open, but minimalized with the Bluetooth on. Stick this in your pocket. When you turn the camera on, it's going to link to it automatically, and you'll always have GPS on your device if you need it for any particular reason. It's, it's nice because it imports into um, Lightroom when you do your imports, so you can kind of keep a catalog of location. And on top of that, what's really nice is if you upload to something like 500 pixels or some sort of a place like that where you can add a location, um, IM, any of those kind of like places where you can, you can curate and cultivate your collection, your portfolio, but at the same time you can put stuff on a marketplace, it'll automatically fill in the location, which is nice. So, as awkward and jumbled as that was, out of the four attempts, that one actually seemed to work. So hopefully this will get the message across. If there are any further confusions or questions, please feel free to comment below and I will address them as, as, as uh, thoroughly as I can. This was just, like I said, tough to record because I'm jumping back and forth between devices and I usually record with reflector right to the computer, uh, but the Wi-Fi linkage to the camera and Bluetooth linkage to the camera all kind of made that impossible. So hopefully this just explained it and clarified it good enough. And until next time, once again, this is Big Dan Bates for Bates Photography. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new or you're interested in our channel, we got a lot of A9 videos out already. The complete menu walkthrough. Uh, we're we're going to be doing some uh, lens reviews on it. We're doing some real world wedding shoots and some model shoots with it. So subscribe, turn on notifications. Uh, or you can like us over at facebook.com forward slash batesphoto.net uh, to know and, and when we're posting all of our new materials so that you can you know see what this camera is really capable of. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day.